Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcast. This is time for the podcast that's in the have very the only variable temperature podcast. Uh, because whatever your sleep temperature is, that's what t- temperature I'm trying to b- bring the podcast. Well, it's more than I invariably go off topic. Maybe about time or temperature or something else. Uh, this podcast is only, but only invariable variable podcast or the podcaster that probably needs to look those words up and you say, what is this uh, person talking about? Invariably you'll have feelings until you fall asleep. Hopefully once you get used to the show, you won't, uh, uh, like, uh, <laughs> what am I talking about? Holy cow. Welcome. If you're new, uh, this is time for sleep with me, the podcast to put you to sleep. Uh, hey, everybody, before we get to the episode here, this episode was recorded a little while ago, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm here to create a safe place. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm doing the best job I can, but I'm here to create a, a safe place for you. And that means that Black Lives Matter. So if you're looking uh, for support for yourself or to support the black members of our community, you could find resources and links in the show notes. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I know this isn't an easy time for everybody, but I wanted to let you know this podcast is going to continue to be coming out on uh, Sunday and Wednesday nights. So ideally, the podcast uh, stays a place uh, that you can rely on uh, whenever you need it. But I do want to ask those of you that are in a position to do so uh, to think about supporting the show. And you could do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. I mean, the main reason that patrons say they support the show is because it feels good. They know they get a lot of value out of the podcast. And they're proud to support the work that goes into the show that puts them to sleep. And they get so much out of. And that's pretty rebellious. It's actually like a countercultural to support a free podcast because you get something out of it. So if you do have an extra 10 bucks in your monthly budget or 20 bucks in your mu- budget, uh, consider becoming a patron. Now, some of you might be like, well, what really is in it for me? Well, $10 and up patrons get uh, two all intro episodes a month. So that's one reason if you're a fan of all intros. If you just want to get to the stories or you don't like any of uh, the singing in the podcast, $5 and up patrons get story only episodes every week and they get get jingle ad-free episodes every week. Uh, and the main reason to become a patron is if you listen on a regular basis and you rely on the show, or especially if you listen all night. So just ask yourself, how many times do you listen to Sleep With Me a month compared to other things you pay for on a monthly basis? And then only if you're in a position to do so, uh, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. One other reason to do so, though, is uh, that now we have an exclusive show. It's only available to 10 and $20 patrons. It's an exclusive behind-the-scenes look. It's still sleepy at, at the making of odder things. And this is just something really cool. You say, wait a second, I'm, I'm the only one that gets to listen to this and it's sleepy and I get a deeper look into the process of making the show. So one more reason to think about becoming a patron at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Oh, Mystery Bar, do you have a song uh, to put me in the mood for this uh, Helix Sleep? When they sleep, one size won't fit all. Helix Sleep customizes your mattress to you to make you more comfortable. Hey everybody, it's Scoots. I'm really excited to talk about Helix, uh, especially during this time when you're at home more often. You really think about, like, how's that bed you're in right now feel? When did you buy it? How long ago did you get it? And when you bought it, was it a a seamless, personalized experience? You know, I love my Helix bed. Helix makes personalized mattresses right here in America, shipped straight to your door with free no-contact delivery, free returns, and a 100-night sleep on a trial and helix has a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete it matches your body type and sleep preference to find the perfect mattress for you what other mattress company takes the time to really make a mattress for you and your body so that you could feel comfortable helix has a specific mattress for each and everyone's unique taste you know i took the quiz i got matched with the helix dusk uh, which kind of goes with this say okay it's bedtime it's time to wind down but it's also important for me because i sleep on my stomach and i sleep on my side i get a little warm so i wanted everything that checked off all of those boxes and for me the quiz did that for me and it matched me up with the helix dusk which has really worked out so well 
Uh, Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ, Wired Magazine, and Apartment Therapy. You take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. The customized mattress will give you the best sleep of your life. And you'll be saying, gee whiz, Helix Sleep. They have a 10-year warranty, so you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. And they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. And the deal gets even better. So you might need to sit up in bed or leave yourself a note because Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash sleep for $200 off. So get over there, take the quiz, and let me know what you got. I'm so excited to find out more. Thanks, Helix. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast where I'm popping my peas and making a lot of noise because I need you to hear it. Uh, Before you get to sleep, uh, you need to know uh, that people like Susan supported Brooklyn, and, and that's how we're able to bring this podcast for free twice a week. Thank you, Susan. Now, Susan didn't use social media. She said, hey, I sent Brooklyn in an email and let him know I heard about them on Sleep With Me, and that's why I supported them. So if you support a sponsor like Brooklyn, and did you get sheets? Did you get towels? Did you get something else? Uh, did you support KiwiCo? Did you get some native deodorant? Did you sign up with Quip? If you can, tag them, tag me in a social media post, or let them know you heard about them on the show so they know their partnership is being heard and valuable. And I can try to thank you on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. So that's the first part of the 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 podcast. Uh, The second, or the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the support you need. And whether that's uh, getting help for self-care, mental health, uh, or supporting the black members of our community because black lives matter. Uh, trying to become part of the solution and, uh, you know, look at what changes you need to make uh, inside and, and with your actions to become part of the solution. Uh, links to resources will be in the show notes. And the third part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is something I support, and it's, we're just winding down, uh, trying to raise money for the Water Wheel Foundation. And each week, the Water Wheel Foundation has been doing a, a live stream of an archived fish show and supporting one organization every single week. So make sure to check out our fundraiser use the link uh, support water wheel take a look at what organization they're supporting and uh, you know d- join in uh, so that's that's it i guess that's the end of the sleepy supporter zone oh mystery bard a lot of people help out on the show who are they this posty poster song sounds like an earful wrote the theme song edits episodes too. carl w the lecture also edits episodes kenny scotty and jennifer runner, 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 runner. Mystery Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. So you can find me. If you listen to the podcast and you want a free way to support the show, spread the word, uh, whether it's online or in person or on Zoom or something, whatever we call it now, you know, in a, in a wet video thingamajig, uh, particularly if you use it, something that I don't really use, like TikTok or uh, what's the business one again? I for, oh, LinkedIn. Uh, you know, if you're on conversation on that or some forums or whatever, uh, let people know when it comes up in conversation naturally or just let them know about podcasts. That helps everybody. So now let's slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. 
This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, changes in time or temperature or, uh, you know, other like uh, other things going, like whatever's going on. Like uh, So things you're thinking about, anything emotionally coming up for you, physically you're experiencing. Or it could be something external or just, you know, variable. Like I said in the intro, for me it is a var- variably, invariably baffling, but variable what it is. Uh, so whatever it is, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff and uh, put you asleep via trying to create a safe place uh, that I have set aside here. Wait, wait, take your mind off. I forgot how the intro goes already, but uh, like trying to create a safe place where you could set aside. All you need to do is get in bed, turn on the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest of uh, what I'm going to attempt to do. Uh, so I already said this, create a safe place where you could set aside. So yeah, get back to that safe place. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to pat it. I'm going to rub it down. And I'm going to say safe place, and then what I'm going to do is send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I'm going to go off topic, like a... I'm going to like, go off topic. That's what pointless meanders kind of are. I'm going to misspeak. I'm going to do, like use word fragment words, fragmented words, fragment words. Uh, fraggle, if there was fraggle words, I don't know. Does it, who many, how many people, I don't think I've talked about the fraggles in a while. If I have, it, it, it hasn't even been in the intro. Fraggle's a good word for a sleep podcast, uh, you say, but the people would say, if listeners would say, but none of that fraggle rock. Maybe put on some fraggle, some smooth fraggle or some easy fraggle. I say, no problem. Fraggle easy or for easy fraggle? You say, maybe you should go out. Okay, so I'm going to send my voice, lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, all to take your mind off stuff as you fall asleep. Now, if you're new, a couple things to know uh, off the top. If you're you're unsure about this show initially, that's perfectly normal. This podcast is very different, so I want to give you some information uh, to try to help you. One is that uh, if you're waiting for this to start or make sense, it's better to consume this podcast very loosely and very out of focus. Uh, because it it doesn't ever start to make sense. You say, when are you going to get to the point? I say, well, that's kind of the point. Is I never bear, you know, I, there's no points in a sleep pod in my sleep podcast. There's just you know rounds and uh, bends. I try not to, have, you know, I try to keep the only thing, you know, I try not to keep it pointy because it, just in case you're sleeping in a water bed or in general, you say I'd prefer no like. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you maybe you have a partner that has pointy elbows or ankles or whatever, and you say, "I got to deal with that at night," or my dog, you know, with the, and I say, "Okay, yeah, I'm not, no points here." So, can you just if you try to figure out this podcast, you could, but maybe do that during the day. Like, so if you're new, just kind of wait and uh, barely listen. This is the one podcast you barely need to listen to. And you barely have to pay me any mind. Uh, so just if you can, see how it goes. Now, I know initially that's asking a lot, and, and I understand, because you say I'm skeptical, I'm doubtful, I'm not sure how to feel about this, because it doesn't sound like a regular podcast. And I say, yeah, there, you're right about all of those things. And most listeners, literally, I just read a review where someone said I like loathed the podcast, and then I listened a year later, and now I'm a regular listener. And that's a pretty common review. So give the show a few tries and see how it goes. Very rarely does it work on the first listen. So that's one thing. 
the next thing is that, uh, okay, wait, so barely listen. Oh, this is really a podcast to keep you company while you fall asleep and not so much to put you to sleep. I'm here to take your mind off of stuff and be here as you fall asleep. So, yeah, that's one thing, is, uh, or that's the second thing. So this is a podcast you don't need to listen to. Not really here to f- put you to sleep. I, I guess that's ironic, but uh, not ironic, but paradoxical. Yeah, more of your bore friend, well, more if you're new, applying to be your bore friend. Or your boar bay, or your boar sib, or your boar cuz, or your boar bestie. And uh, yeah, so that, that's uh, the, the next thing to know. If you're a regular listener, I'm so glad you're back uh, and happy that you're here too. Holy cow. Thank you so much for coming back and give me, giving me your time. So, okay, so, but if you, but, but for the new listeners, I do want to fill you on a few more things that can throw new listeners off. Other than, oh, creaky dulcet tones, that's another thing. And pointless meanders, like creaky dulcet like a door. That's kind of how my voice sounds, which, again, is something you kind of have to adjust to because a lot of people expect a sleep podcast to be a little bit more dreamy. And that's not how my Nana describes me. She said, he's not a dreamboat. He's more like a, a scow. If I had to describe it, my, 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 my scooter, say, Nana, can you not call me my scooter? Because that already, like, uh, I guess that like, negates me being a dreamboat anyway. Yeah, he's more of a scow than, like, and you know what they carry? You know what normally they carry in scows? I say, Nana, okay, well, it's a, like, yeah, I guess I have a lot of utility. Thanks, Nana. Anyway, uh, moving on, uh, I don't know what I had to do with the podcast, but so, uh, okay, so if you're a regular listener, oh, give it a few tries. Okay, structure the show is the other thing that can throw new listeners off uh, strongly and understandably because we're not structured like most podcasts. And again, like your your natural expectation when you start a sleep podcast or any podcast is different than what this podcast is. Now, I guess that's what makes it work for the people it works for. It just doesn't work for everybody. So I really hope the show works for you. If it doesn't work for you, you could always go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you to check out other sleep podcasts. So, okay, so those are two things. The next thing to know... Other than that, oh, structure the show. So show starts off with a greeting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. That's so everybody can feel seen and say, hey, welcome, come on in. This is a safe place I'm trying to create and uh, settle in and get comfortable. Then there's business. That's how we bring you this podcast that takes a lot of work, believe it or not, uh, to produce uh, twice a week for free. So it's a pretty good deal is the patrons and the people that support the sponsors that helps us. So, so that's that part. Then this is, so that throws some people off, but then what happens is after the business, there's like 12 to 20 minutes of me just talking in an intro, which is what we're doing right now. And if you're wondering when the podcast is going to start, they can really throw you off. So I do kind of repeat this in a lot of episodes. It's kind of already started, but I'll keep going and explaining that. I mean, the intro serves one purpose. You know what you're getting into uh, for a new listener, but even though because you say, well, it took you 20 minutes to explain what your sleep podcast is. And I'd say, exactly. So you kind of get an idea of the tone and the sense of humor, <laughs> like a, sense of uh, humor attempts uh, of this podcast. But for regular listener, the intro serves another purpose, which is, oh, it's familiar. Scoots is here. Uh, he's going to keep me company. He's going to try to explain what the podcast is. But it's going to be different every time because I found personally uh, that every other sleep solution I've tried has, like, just hadn't, hasn't had the variability. Like, each, like, you, I just adjust or my brain starts to adjust and starts, uh, like, thinking more. So that's, like, why the intro's different every time. Otherwise, I could just use one of the 800 intros I've already done or whatever, 900. I don't even know how many it's been. So those are two things to know. But the other thing is for regular listeners, the intro is part of their wind down routine. 
So either they're getting ready for bed or they're in bed getting comfortable and maybe they're doing some sort of other wind down activity or they're just in bed letting the day drift away and getting some distance. And because, again, like I said, with other sleep solutions, one, I found I adjust to them. The other thing is, like, they're not... uh, I don't know. It takes a while for us to get to sleep and get comfortable. It's just a reality for, for us. I mean, for the person next to you that's snoring, possibly, they just seem to hit their head hits a pillow. But we're a little bit different. And that's okay. It, it, like, uh, And that's what I'm here for. So that's the other thing. It's like, so you, as you become a regular listener, you could say, oh, I'd like to start the podcast as I brush my teeth. Or, oh, I like to do it as I'm petting my pets or, you know, whatever it is. It's maybe you build a house of cards before bed and not in your, maybe you do it in your bed. I don't know. Maybe you play, you also listen to podcasts and play something else like, like Pink Noise or Fraggle. Maybe you don't, maybe you do Fraggle, classic, classical Fraggle. Uh, oh, some and the, and so that's uh, oh, I'll I'll go I'll try to get back to the fraggles. Uh, so that's the intro of the show. And some listeners, about two percent of listeners, skip ahead to like twenty minutes and listen there. Or some people are patrons; they listen to story only episodes or all night ep- episodes. And believe it or not, a lot of patrons and even people listen to all intros. Uh, and some listeners listen to the intros during the day to help them unwind and focus. So if you're new or you're a regular listener, you could try something new out too, uh, but just and just see how it goes. So after the intro is business, so that's part of podcast structure, and uh, then there's a story. Tonight it'll be our episodically modular, like slightly serialized story, Otter Things, O-T-T-E-R-T-H-I-N-G-S, uh, with our heroine Emma Otter. Or our, our narrator, one of the heroines in the story, Emma Otter. Uh, and uh, so that'll be the story. Then there's some thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. And a couple other things. The reason I make the show is because I've been there. Like, I know how it feels in the deep, dark night or the, the, the wee hours of the morning. Or weeing in the hours of the night in the morning and saying, I got to get up, uh, drank too much before bedtime. So whatever it is, like I've been there and I just want to make bedtime less of a rigmarole, take a little bit of the stress, drain that balloon. And and if I can't make bedtime something for you to look forward to, at least I can remove part of that dread that I experience a lot of times. And then actually my bedtime routine helps to counteract and soothe that part of me and say, okay, well, at least I enjoy these things about bedtime so that's like one reason I make the show. The other reason I make the show is you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, so uh, that's what, what like, uh, like I just believe that. And I believe that if you get a good night's sleep, your life will be a little bit better. And uh, you'll be in a position maybe to, 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 to do other things and be rested. So if I can help provide that, that's my honor. So that's why I make the show, and also I make the show if you can't sleep. But this is another thing, I, 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 like, uh, if you can't sleep at all, the podcast goes from the beginning to the end. This story tonight, is it's a story you don't need to listen to, but you could listen to it if, if you can't sleep, if you just need some company in the deep, dark night. So, yeah, I just want you to... So I'm also here to keep you company if you can't sleep. Uh, so those are the reasons I make the show... And yeah, some of you may be saying, what's a fraggle? And I'd say, I don't really know. Like, it's interesting because this is Otter Things, which uh, one of the influences for this was Emmett Otter, Jim Henson, and Henson Studios and everything. The fraggles were also made by Henson Studios. And the fraggles were like another set of Muppets. They lived underground with some dozers. And and this is as far as it it goes. There was like... like, even though I watched the show a lot, it was on HBO uh, in the 80s. I really don't remember anything else about it. Uh, I'm not kidding. Uh, and I, don't, I, even, I guess I remember kind of feeling ambivalent about it sometimes. 
Uh, so I don't know. I guess that doesn't really help anybody, but that's just like, uh, so, but Fraggles were Fraggle. I don't know what Fraggle Rock was. I don't know if that's where they lived because they lived in a, like a, a, like a rock a underground rock area. And the dozers were always building stuff. I think the Fraggles were like to eat it or somebody else liked to eat it. Uh, like, uh, but they, they kind of went along with the podcast cause they said, can't you get away? Worries for another day. Let the music play down at Fraggle Rock. So down at Fraggle Rock. So it was where they lived. Uh, but maybe one day someone said, can you turn that Fraggle Rock down? You see, no problem. I'm putting on the fra- Fraggle, you know, what do they call it now? There's easy listening. There's another one, though, right? There's uh, like, uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd prefer smooth Fraggle Smooth. Uh, you sure? I'm going to put on some Fraggle Smooth. So that's it. That's why I'm like, I don't know. I think that's all like I tried to explain what the, fra- those are the fraggles uh, in a nutshell <laughs> from a, from a nutshell, uh, uh, where my brain lives. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. That's the main message I want to get across. Give the show a few tries. You deserve a good night's sleep. So give the podcast a couple tries, see how it goes. I hope it works for you. Like I said, it doesn't work for everybody. But I work very hard on the show. I really yearn and strive, and I really want to help you fall asleep. Thank you again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways that we were able to bring this podcast to twice a week. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I don't know if you've ever uh, thought about becoming a patron and then changed your mind or decided, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to be a rebel with cause. I don't want to support a free podcast. I'd love to hear why. Uh, but I, I, you know, I think I have some pretty good reasons why you, maybe you could think about it if you're in a position to do so. If you're not, you know, this is an uncertain time. I'm just reaching out to the people that are in a place where you could afford an extra five, 10 or 20 bucks a month. So if you can't afford it, you get a lot out of the show. Uh, those are the basic reasons to consider becoming a patron. And you say only, only in the, only one or two out of every hundred listeners becomes a patron. Well, me, do, do you have what it takes to do that? Uh, do you listen to the podcast, uh, like five, six, seven nights a week? Do you listen to five, 10, 20, 30 episodes a week? Do you wait? Are you listening to the episodes on Sunday and Wednesday when they come out? Like you say, oh boy, do you love all intros? Do you want to listen to our exclusive patron-only series that 10 and $20 patrons are getting? But particularly if you listen all night, the patron feed is just way more designed for that. Or if you consume a lot of sleep with me and you want more uh, selections or you want story only episodes or you want all intros. See if you have extra 10 or $20 a month in your budget and uh, go over to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Uh, you get something back, but really it's what you get on the inside that you can feel good about that you say, well, the podcast I rely on is going to be there when I need it and when thousands of other people need it too. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. Uh, that's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. All right, hey, everybody, this is our new, well, not new anymore, but it, like if you're new to this series, it's new to you, right? Uh, so, and you could kind of start this wherever it is because our host, she's going to catch us up. Uh, this is our episodically modular. It has seriality, but the great thing about uh, seriality with Sleep With Me is you can listen to it in any order because Emma will catch us up. Uh, so this is, our, I'm turning it over, turning things over to Emma Otter for our series, uh, uh, Otter Things, O-T-T-E-R-T-H-I-N-G-S. Uh, hey, everyone, this is Emma, uh, Emma, 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 Emma Otter here, sorry, uh, and I'm just recording things, uh, and I uh, wanted to uh, say, okay, if I'm going to do this, and in, in, uh, I've been recording in sessions trying to think of it from a radio mindset of saying, okay, this might be your first time listening. So I'm Emma Otter, and I'm, I'm, I'm hosting this uh, re- recorded radio program or uh, whatever it'll be called in the future. And I'm telling you a story of my town and some otter things that happened there. And I want you to know that all will be well. I'm here telling you this story, and I'm in a a nice, comfortable chair as I tell it to you. Uh, But once upon a time, uh, to to, to say, how how do we get to where you're about to tell us tonight, Em? I say, okay, once upon a time, I had uh, 
a best friend and two other friends. Now, my best friend, of course, they know who they are. Uh, but I'm going to list all my friends together and a new friend we had met. Uh, so I had uh, friends uh, Willow, uh, Vaughn, and Elijah, or V and LJ. Sometimes those two went by. And we lived in a town. I lived with my parents. Uh, Willow lived with her sister, Dari, and her mom, Frances. I have a brother, Tefe. Uh, and uh, we live in a town. Another important person of our part in our town is Leon the Bullfrog. Uh, he's the of our resource, like t- community resource team. And we all live in a swamp together. On three sides of the swamp, it kind of goes off uh, and goes into other swamps and other towns and, and things like that into the great beyond. But on one side of our town is the place beyond the swamp where we don't go. It's, uh, uh, I guess, you, I don't know if bisected is the right word, by a road uh, where r- r- random moments of vehicles will go by. And there's a tunnel to the other side of the swamp and there's old buildings. But it's a place we don't go. And I think that's it. We're in middle school. Tefe's in high school, my brother, with uh, Dari, Willow's sister. And I'm probably forgetting something, but one uh, night after playing Bards and Big Bunnies, which is a role-playing game my friends and I played, my friends uh, Willow, LJ, and Vaughn headed home. And Willow took a a pass less taken and... and, uh, uh, no one knew, didn't, we didn't see hear from her for a while. Now, like I said, all will be well, but we didn't know if, uh, Willow moved away, which can happen from time to time. We, kids dream of being musicians. We play a game, Bards and Big Bunnies. So we didn't know if Willow moved away to the big city, went on a goose chase. There's geese that were known to lead people on goose chases some people said we double dared her to go to the place beyond the swamp, which isn't true. And at the time, we started to wonder if there was a big bunny. We wondered that, uh, me and my friends, like uh, like from Bards and Big Bunnies. And so we went to look for my friend Willow. We didn't find Willow. We found a strange uh, otter uh, person named Billy, a being, otter body. Or not an otter body, more of a uh, like a beaver body with a duck duck's bill or a bill like a duck, a bit bit wider though. And we tried to help uh, Billy and brought Billy back to my house. Uh, and then we slowly realized that Billy had these powers. Billy could sing songs and make people freeze or uh, make things float or close things, stuff like that through the power of like this uh, throat of Bill singing music. Now, meanwhile, uh, 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 Francis was looking for Willow as well and believed, yeah, Willow probably didn't move away. But no one really believed Francis, and Fra- but Francis had made contact with Willow uh, through wind chimes and was hearing Willow, and, and wi- like, or people said, you think you're hearing Willow. Uh, and Dari was trying to help her mother, and at the same time, she went to her uh, dad's house out in River Bottom to see was Willow there. Willow wasn't there. She went with my brother Tefe and her friend Babs, uh, then she came out of my her 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 her, 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 her dad's house and found um, Tefe and Babs K I S S I N G ing. It was a little bit of not happy about that. And then ba- then like they drove home, they stopped, and then Tefe and Dari were talking about it. Then they came back to the, the car, and Babs wasn't there. They wondered if Babs just walked home. But since then, Dari's been like, I think there's a Babs is like a Willow Babs. Something's odd. Um, and then Leon Bull, the community resource, uh, was saying, well, okay, wh- where's the Willow? Uh, I need to do my due diligence. And so I uh, looked around and said, well, we didn't double dare Willow. I started to think there's something like going on in the place beyond the swamp, which was run by 
some larger community resource organization uh, bigger than our town and a doctor named Max and Bull went there and they said, well, uh, that's interesting. We don't have anything to do with it, but, 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 but Leon suspected that uh, that was not the case, that they were not being honest there. And uh, that something else was afoot, because clearly there's like lower levels and all this stuff. Uh, and so, so a lot going on, mysterious stuff, and all the mysteries of the road and vehicles without drivers. And occasionally, this was the adult stuff. We kids more fantasized about it, but this idea of humans and, and uh, you know, oh, because I'm an otter, bull's a bullfrog. I don't know. You'll get you'll you'll get the the, the gist of it. Uh, we're, we're 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 people that live in a swamp, and so that's kind of where we left off. As we we're all looking in, still like uh, kind of oh no, like uh, sorry, it's so it's so silly. The most important thing was uh, so we said Billy after we met Billy and started to become friends. Billy said uh, that uh, maybe Billy knew where Willow was. And we got a lot of hope uh, that Billy knew where Willow was. And then Billy uh, let us, uh, uh, but eventually we found that Leon found that at the, like a, the dumping area, the former dump, which says no dumping now, someone had dumped a bunch of albums and music uh made by Willow, like professional albums, records, CDs, and cassettes, ready for sale, but dumped there. A whole album, meaning Willow had moved away and recorded the the album. We, I was very upset with Billy, so were all of us, for leading us on a goose chase in some sense and giving us hope where really our friend had moved away. Also, the album was mostly making fun most of the songs were like uh, making fun of our town and us and our friends. Uh, now, meanwhile, and this is, I guess, where we left off, had headed back to Francis and Dari's house to tell Francis and Dari. Now, meanwhile, Francis had already said, well, I've heard from Willow and that she had seen bunny ears and felt a bunny hopping and shaking the whole house. Uh, so she had run out of her house and just happened to run into her daughter, Dari, and they were holding one another. And that's kind of where we left, leave off with our famous, like most famous resident of our town, uh, uh, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, thank you, Willow. Uh, as the ladies, as the gentlemen, as the boys, as the girls, the friends beyond the binary. It's time for other things. Splish, splash. Thank you, Antonio. Thanks so much. So we were at, at uh, Francis and Dari's house and Willow's house, and uh, Leon had come with some of the resource team, and they were looking around. They had they had listened to, to Francis say there was a big bunny. Uh, Willow's been talking to me through the wind chimes. So uh, uh, not an easy situation to deal with. And uh, Bull was trying to be as conscientious as he could and saying, okay, well, where'd you see the big bunny? Let's look around for it outside the window, eh? Its ears, like, tried to open the window. Okay, well, how clearly did you see it? How big was this bunny? But it was dark, and they had already found Willow's albums, which was the real reason uh, that uh, Bull had come to the house. So then Bull said, listen, Francis, uh, sit down. Like, uh, when I have this, uh, this, I have to write you a ticket for, uh, like, uh, but, but we'll t- we could deal with that tomorrow because you're going to have to come down to the transfer station and pay the ticket there because it's technically through the transfer station. We're non-biodegradable. We deal with non-biodegradable things because it seems like somehow your daughter, uh, she's the only one whose name's on this album, other than like, like, uh, 
so they've attributed it. It wasn't my idea, but it was uh, joint protocols of community resources is most likely person with ownership. Uh, you know, you know how it is. So I need you to come by the transfer station where I'll pay this fine. It's not that bad, and I'm sorry, but it, it, you have to do it. And you just have to confirm that the, the that this was Willow, even though we Willow's pictures on the album and her name, and the songs are all about us in the town and even me, and none of them are very nice, but that's fine. And Francis said, no, 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 those, uh, those albums aren't by Willow. She's not in, a, like, a town, and she's not in a studio. And the, uh, Leon said, kind of, okay, Francis, I know this is difficult. Like, I moved, when I moved to River Bottom to start my career there, I moved with a family. And then I made some choices, and I put, invested too much in my career, and I got, like, uh, too many grand ideas, and my ego got too big. And I came back by myself. Uh, and that's not, like, I've had a lot of ups and downs, and sometimes I haven't seen things clearly. And Francis said, Leon, this is a different situation. I understand what you're saying, but Willow is a kid. You moved to River Bottom as an adult. And while maybe an immature adult when you moved there, you made your own decisions and followed your own path. Uh, and uh, that is not what Willow did. Willow did not go to River Bottom to start a career or anywhere else, uh, some other studio in one of the other you know towns known for music. Uh, she's somewhere else, and this isn't this, that's not her on the album. No, it's mine. Said, well, it is. Uh, so how do I help? Uh, and he looked at Dari and he said, okay, well, just come by tomorrow and we'll figure it out tomorrow. Just get some rest. Uh, now, you also might be asking, what is it? What was it been River Bottom? What's that, Willow? And I said, well, let me tell you just a touch about it because it might be confusing. But before, the chief was a resource officer, but always dreamed of being a lounge singer, which you might not know what a lounge or a lounge singer is. It was mostly based on a TV show that, that about this lounge at the top of a hotel with a piano lounge singer, and it was a sitcom. It wasn't a reality show, and uh, that's kind of what a Francis meant. Is like it was an immature decision, maybe. But the short version for right now is that a lounge singer. A lounge is like a place. It's a bit like a bar where grown-ups go. And it's different than a club where bands play because it's like somewhere in between just a place you go to talk and a pl just a place you go to be entertained. It's somewhere in the middle. So a lounge singer can have a band, but usually it's more of a performative thing. And they sing songs. I don't know how to explain it to people that... Uh, they sing these songs that are kind of fun to listen to, but it's 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 not quite background music. It's more than that. And the people that are really good at it, they transcend the, the that, and then it becomes a, a spectacle to see. Yeah, but I think you know that, uh, like, but there's other people that it's, like, hard to tell if they're serious or they're performing, but there's always a performative aspect. I don't know. I'm not good at, like, a... Uh, but they don't sing ballads, but they sing stuff that would be ballad-esque. Uh, and so we'll get back to it. But that was what I dreamed of. And uh, then uh, back to the Willow, Dory, Francis, uh, Leon situation. Uh, Francis started to not be, to be have strong feelings. She said, you know what, Bolt, just get, don't tell me to go to sleep. Uh, I know Willow's nearby. I know Willow needs us to, to help, uh, but I'm not sure anymore about that. So I'm going to stay here 
Uh, and then she said, so you're saying Willow's not on the albums? And she said, I'm not going to discuss it any further. Just come to the, looked at Dory and said, just come to the transfer station tomorrow and you could get a better idea what I'm talking. And then uh, Francis said, good day or good evening. Like, I'm going to be here waiting uh, for Willow and I'm going to have her favorite uh, food. Uh, which is choco, vanilla, cocoa puffs, poofs, I'm sorry, dino poofs, which is uh, choco, vanilla, dino poofs, and I'm going to have a radio playing music, and I'm going to be here. And I know you might not think, you might think this is just all how I'm processing this, uh, the idea of my daughter moving away to start a music career. Uh, but it's just not the case. But I accept that that's how you're viewing it, and I need my space now. Goodbye. And so uh, Francis sat down uh, with the radio and the Cocoa Puffs, and Dari was kind of in a, a tough situation because Dari was just in a teenager and uh, said, okay, Mom, let me get you a blanket, and why don't you lie down and wait for Willow? In case you fall asleep, I'll also be here in my room. I'll keep my door open. Uh, but this is not, you know, this is not easy. Uh, like, uh, And so Dory had to do a lot of sitting and breathing. But also Dory's brain was saying, huh, there is something odd about this. I'm not sure if it's how my mom's grappling with this, but, uh, or, but Dari was also wondering about Babs. But none of it had come together in Dari's mind either. There was still doubt there about the authority saying, you know, the authority figure saying this. But even as the authority Leon walked out to get in and drive away, something felt empty. Maybe it was the connection to his choice to be a lounge singer and that, uh, it didn't work out for his family. And they said, well, we'd prefer you be a lounge singer by yourself or whatever. We're going to go uh, live a more structured life uh, or if it was something else. Uh, so Leon was frowning a little bit and, and, and drove off. Now, meanwhile, back at my house, I, I had still allowed Billy to, to, to come along with me because... At this point, it hadn't involved my mom or my dad or uh, any other adults, and I knew Billy would still need a place to stay. But I was steaming out my ears, and I was both MAD at Willow and Billy. But I was kind of directing everything at Billy as I was kind of tearing up some pictures of Willow and I and going through the gifts that Will had given me, like friendship bracelets and those things, and dismantling them. Because I was convinced uh, my friend Will had moved away to start a career without even telling any of her friends. And her first album was to make fun of us in the same way the, the kids at school would make fun of us, and, and uh, so that we were never really friends, that Will maybe was just... Uh, I didn't, I didn't get it. I thought I was friends with Willow. So, and I was craw you know, making like, uh, like putting, putting things on her face, you know, like, uh, you know, like, like making swirls in her eyes and those kind of things and frowns on her pictures. Meanwhile, Billy was like working on a tape recorder. So then that was, I said, can you stop with that? And Billy was kind of ignoring me. And I kept, like, trying to start F-I-G-H-T's, but Billy just kept, you know, and I was trying to, I was being not nice. And Billy kept working on a tape player. And then started to play the tape player. Then it started to play backwards. Uh, first, it was like a regular one of our tapes. Uh, uh, it was uh, George Michael playing forwards. Like once, like a, like a solo album. And then all of a sudden, it, it, like, uh, Billy kept working on it, and then Billy looked at me, and then the tape started to slow down, and uh, it, George Michael's voice got more slow. And then it started to play, and I could even tell it was playing George Michael backwards, and I said, well, that's weird. It was very odd, and it was odd even to listen to that. But then suddenly I started to hear Willow's voice coming through the speaker in the tape player, singing the same song, Freedom. 
uh, Willow is singing Freedom. Uh, get it, you know, the time and place, whatever, like a brand new th- thing. Uh, rock and roll TV or something. But then Willow was making up her own lyrics about missing her friends uh, and uh, her mom and her sister and how much she loved all of us. Uh, like, uh, not quite scatting, but singing about it. And almost, I think she even said, Emma, can you hear me? And maybe she went into another song and then went back. I don't know, because I was mesmerized. And I was looking at it. It was happening. I was watching the tape move. It was not my imagination. And I said, is that Willow? And she nodded her bill. And so I called up uh, Vaughn. And I said, Vaughn, uh, is LJ there? They were having a sleepover. And I said, LJ, Vaughn. They said, we're not going to school tomorrow. Uh, uh, We're going to meet up and find Willow. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, don't worry. Just come over here tomorrow. Uh, Don't go to school. We'll go to school late or something. Uh, And at first they were like, just have to do with Billy because they were also, they were mad at me and Billy in some sense and just frustrated a little embarrassed because we said at school everybody's going to know about this album too and that we were made fun of. So that was the plan we had that I had made. And then I was reconvinced. Will this? I knew that something was odd. Uh, and I had some hope that we would find our friend Willow. Now the next day, Chief went to the transfer station, which is also like also part of a dump. But you know, we use like again, we separate the compostables or recyclables, and the uh, this. So this is more of a compost. I think people in the past called it a dump, but also a transfer station. So anything that wasn't anyway, not in, super important, it was in the break room with. Uh, Texina, who was, she, she ran the transfer station and said, geez, Texina, can I have like a, what is up with these albums anyway? Did you look at them? And Texina said, well, the representative of the record company said uh, they didn't want anybody trying to sneak out with any of them uh, because it was like, I don't know, that and, and, and uh, but she said, yeah, I did look at it. It said like R&B music on the back and, uh, uh, she said, yeah, like it, we, we could look down because they could look down into the transfer station uh, from where the office was up in a tree and then see the pile of albums, uh, got some binoculars and looked R&B music. Is that like River bo- R&B, River Bottom, something, I don't know, R&B music. And uh, she said, well, how would I find out more about it? Uh, and Texina said, go to the record store and ask uh, at the record store. And she said, oh, yeah, you're probably right about that. That's a great idea. Yeah, go ask Tasha at the record store. Okay, that's a good idea. And not long after that, Dari and Francis showed up, and uh, they both looked pretty, you know, like they could use a nap. Uh uh, but, uh, Frances was also very, uh, vocal cause she said, I cannot believe I have to pay a fine. Uh, I'm here to pay my fine for my daughter's uh, like, uh, stuff. And then we'll take it with us, uh, her albums and stuff. And they said, well, actually the records are stuff or property at the record company. They're going to pick them up and dispose of them. And then she said, well, why can't they pay the fine? They said, well, it's just a way the regulations work in our, you know, our area. I'm sorry. And she said, fine. Like, I just want to get this over with. Uh, uh, can I at least look at them? And they said, well, you could look at them at a distance uh, uh, because the record company doesn't, they, they want it all accounted for. And she said, this is unbelievable, but I'll pay. How much is a fine? And they said, uh, uh, Texina said this. Someone, and then she, she said, I'll pay the fine. I'm, I just uh, like uh, wanted to get it so you could see it. Uh, and she said, no, no, I'll pay the fine. It's my daughter, but I want the album. And they said, you can't take it. The, the record company even has uh, some representatives here keeping an eye on them. Uh, 
And Francis wrote out a check and then stormed off to go look at it and then give the two record company representatives. Uh, they were really just part of the street team. Uh, a piece of her mind. And then she came back and she said, I want to, I want to hear, like, uh, she brought in one of the members of the record company street team. She said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I want my check back unless I can listen to one of these records. Uh, and the person in the street team said, sure, I'll play it like on my w- w- walk around tape player. And, uh, like in front of everybody, like, cause that's what the record company told me to do. And she said, play it. And, and she started to play, she started to play it, uh, over a speaker on a walk around tape player. And it was, uh, like, a, it was a little bit distorted, uh, if I'm honest with you, but that's maybe me looking back. Uh, but Dari said, huh, that sounds like Willow. And Francis has listened, uh, and Dari said, didn't, Fra- yeah, the, Willow knows this song. She sang it, like, uh, three or four years ago at, uh, like, a, like a talent show. And uh, both, uh, like, nodded and said, uh. But Francis listened and said, no, 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 no. That is not what Willow sounds like. Uh, she sings, you know, when when she's taking a shower. She sings when she's doing laundry. I hear her singing every day. That is not my current daughter singing. That's some sort of uh, nonsense. And Leon and uh, Dari looked at each other, and Francis stormed out. And Leon said, do you think, to, to Dari, like, do you think your mom's going to be okay? And Dari said, uh, does it look like it? And, and Leon said, no. And he said, so Dari or Willow sang that at the talent show? And uh, uh, Dari said, yeah, 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 a couple of years ago. We might even have a tape of it at home. I'll look. Uh, Maybe I could play that for my mom. And, and the uh, chief said, well, leave it in your mailbox or something, Maybe I, or make a copy, and maybe I can play it for your mom. That might be easier. You just take care of her, okay? And then uh, Dari said, you know, um, I have another awkward thing. Uh, and then Dari went into a long, drawn-out and not a- accurate expon- explanation, explanation of... Uh, her bar, bab, her babs and uh, Tefe's trip uh, to River Bottom, and then not being able to find babs, but she kind of made it look like uh, she tried to make everybody look good. Kind of looked at her and said, "Well, well, I talked to Babs' parents uh, earlier, and they said Babs was so inspired by Willow that uh, she had moved to like I didn't want to tell your mom this." Uh, because I wanted to ease our way into it. But Babs uh, uh, sent her parents a letter, left them a note, sent them a letter from Riverbottom uh, with the same stationary R&B music that she was just signed. And Willow is her mentor, even though Willow's younger. Dari said, huh. Doesn't sound Babs. Does that doesn't sound like Babs? Babs doesn't want Babs is a men, not a mentee. She's a mentor. Like she wouldn't take advice from anybody. And, and she said she wouldn't do, join R and B music. Uh, like she she wants to be a pop star. If she was going to be a like a, that doesn't sound like a pop label. And then Dari went out of the uh, transfer station. And Francis wait, waiting in the car, and they had a strong uh, disagreement about things. Because uh, Dari's just a kid, she said, "What do you, Mom? Like, what do you like back and forth kind of thing? Please be reasonable. Please help me deal with the situation, not with the wind chimes and the stuff. Uh, and also the news about Babs, even though it didn't quite sit right with uh, Dari, she said, "You know what, Mom? I'm gonna walk home." And uh, I don't know how Tefe knows these things. My brother, the handsomest otter this side of, uh, you know, other than Antonio Banderas. Uh, but he had borrowed my Uncle Emmett's uh, truck again and pulled up and uh, saw Dari walking and said, Hey, you you need a ride? Uh, I'll give you a ride. 
And the daughter said, oh, you can give me a ride, but don't talk to me. Just drive. And uh, Tuffy said, sure. Uh, and she said, don't talk. Uh, and Tuffy said, I will not, you know, and she said, no talking. So, and I don't want to have to talk to tell you not to talk. And Tuffy said, oh, and then nodded and they drove off. Now, meanwhile, me and my friends were getting together and going over things. And again, they had a lot of doubt in Billy and my judgment. So we were going and I was saying, we were debating. And then I was saying, you got to prove it to him, Billy. And she started to, it wasn't working as good as the night before, but she did get it to kind of play backwards, uh, Willow singing. But they said that could be anyone. But Vaughn, you know, LJ was like uh, the one who was first trying to find Willow. So he he was the one that was most upset because he said, what, like, this was all a goose chase. But Vaughn was kind of like, well, it could be Willow. If only we had a way to, like, uh, amplify uh, or listen, like, uh, how, how are you doing it? And Billy said, I'm listening into the tape, you know, those... Uh, pulling it from the air and into the tape. And then we said, oh, the big ear at school, the big listener. Uh, so we said, let's go to school. And then we said, we can't bring a, like a, a beaver with a duck's bill to school. And we said, well, let's dress up in period, like because that was one of the things we did when we played Bards and Bunnies and other role-playing games is we would actually role-play. And that wasn't really out of character for us, especially since we were going to be in for a lot of embarrassment in school. So we all dressed up, and uh, we decided uh, to, to uh, there was like this one thing when we would go to the Bards and Bunnies fairs, there was uh, this uh, crew of washers, uh, the laundry crew, and they did a comedy and singing show that we really liked, uh, uh, the laundered uh, lasses, and uh, Lord, and uh, that was what they were called. So we said, okay, we could dress up as them, and then Billy, we could just pretend like uh, Billy's Billy's a duck uh, and not a beaver. So we got dressed up in those garbs, and we headed off to school. But when we got to school, there was a assembly going on about Willow, and we said, oh, boy, because we saw the big, like, sign, these banners out front and posters. It was from uh, a debar- Bark, uh, which, I, like, even Billy at the door said, DeBark. Uh, and I said, the D's silent. And she said, DeBark. Uh, and I said, it's just Bark, uh, D-B-A-R-A-C, with the D silent. Uh, and LJ said, yeah, it's for, uh, don't, uh, be around records and comic books. And they come to our school to give, uh, to talk about how records and comic books, uh, are not good for kids to read unless they're from the DB, DeBark Records and DeBark, uh, Entertainment, Illustrated Entertainment. So we went in, and then, of course, the whole assembly went quiet, uh, and some people were laughing. Some people were laughing at our period garb, but most people were laughing because they knew it was us, and they knew Will had made an album that made fun of us. We sat through this, you know, tedious presentation about, like, uh, the new launch uh, of DeBark uh, Illustrated History or something, which was not a, a full history of anything. And then the assembly broke up, and then two of the kids that uh, never nice to us uh, came up, and they started laughing at us uh, about how, we- and I said, Willow is our friend, and because they were making fun of Willow, they were making fun of us. Uh, and uh, I got very, I strongly wor- used to I statements to tell them how I felt, which they couldn't handle, so they started having steamy ears, uh, and one of them started to 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 to, to like uh, cause me, you know, their hackles were up. Uh, and what do I know? But Billy, I started to hear something in Billy's throat. Uh, and then uh, Vaughn was the first thing to say, "Is that that song? Uh, when I think about you, 
Uh, and then we said, oh, yeah, it is. Uh, like, we barely, we don't even know what that song means. But then we saw, like, I Touch Myself was a song. And then everybody was laughing at the, the Not Nice Kids. Uh, and uh, whatever, that, that was like, maybe I should just stop there before I get too deep into it. And meanwhile, the, the, the Leon was looking into this. He said, there's something odd about all this. So Leon headed down to the record store uh, and said, have you heard about this? And they said, we're, it was just, they were just by yesterday to give me some copies of Willow's album. Uh, they, but they only showed it to me. And then they said, okay, well, this is coming out soon. Would you buy any? I said, this is an album of insults of our town. And they said, well, here's our catalog. Here's our upcoming releases. Uh, just let us know if you want to buy this album. Cause, uh, and I said, well, how much is it? And it was like five times the rate of a normal one. Cause they said, well, it's reflective of your town uh, and there'll be strong feelings about it. And I told him, I, you know, I'd lived here my whole life, so I wasn't interested. I mean, that you weren't interested, but it's good. Uh, and I said, well, have you heard of this R&B records before? And, uh, and the record store owner said, well, it's strange. I've heard of R.N.B. records, but this is just R&B records. Uh, it's different. I've never heard of anybody in their catalog. Most of it happens to be public domain, but that makes sense. Maybe it's just a like company. They're you, they're trying to do public domain. Re, and they do, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, just give it to me straight. And I said, well, I think it's a joke, uh, or it's just the company's going to be a joke, uh, or their business model's a joke. Okay. Well, any idea where I'd find? Uh, the, the, the like the, it was the same people like and I said yeah the same probably same people watching waiting for them to pick up the albums and they said staying at the motel so I drove over to the motel where the street team was saying staying and he knocked on the door he brought a like a, a pizza from our pizza place he said hey like I know you're all trying to wait for your records to get picked up at the transfer station I brought you this pizza. And they were like, oh, wow, thanks, man. How'd you even know? He said, well, I'm the resource officer. This is a pizza's a resource. Hardy, har, har. And I said, well, okay, well, uh, anyway, you know, oh, man. Uh, and uh, then the, you made a lot of small talk, which was really boring. But then they kind of said, you mind if I take my shoes off? And they said, your shoes off? We're eating pizza. I said, yeah, you're right. I got it. Like, I was over at, uh, on that bog walk and uh, I got a sliver on the bog walk because it's so old. One of the two members of the street team said, yeah, but it happened to me once with my tail. I said, yeah, but I won't take my shoes off uh, like here. Yeah, anyway, enjoy the pizza. I better go. I could take my shoes off in the privacy of my own truck or office. Uh, when he left, he noticed there was another vehicle sitting out that drove off, but only in the back of his mind did he notice. Drove back uh, to, as fast as he could to the transfer station to wait for the record company people to come. On his way, though, he stopped at uh, the mailbox uh, of uh, Dari and Francis's house, which is way out on the road. So it was convenient, and the tape was in there. Uh, Dari, at some point, had put the tape in there of uh, Willow's uh, thing and put it in, in and listened to it as he drove uh, in the rest of the talent show because he was driving in his tape player and of his truck. And then the guys at the transfer station, the record company was just pulling up with a big truck uh, to load everything. Good, good, get the junk out of here. Thank goodness. Uh, and they said, yeah, we got it. And they said, no, 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 let me help. I wanted this stuff out of town, back in, you know, b b fines paid. I want this, I want to move forward right now. Don't worry. I, like, uh, And it was a couple of people that had given pizza to her there, and they still didn't know that lured them with a little, a little tricky poo when he said he had gotten a sliver. So it was like, oh, you know, I'm not as young and spry as all of you. Don't worry. I got this box, so I'm, I'm, uh, 
and then the trip to, uh, and then just spilled the whole box so while they were loading the truck said oh boy don't worry i'll clean all this up uh, what a mess i made we pocketed a cassette tape of willows uh, and they said okay it's all good uh, you take off Sorry about slowing you down. I hope you enjoyed that pizza. But I got to get back. I got to take my shoes off now. Oh, boy. And uh, got in the car, listened to the talent show again, and then put in the tape, uh, the willow tape, which, again, there's just something that didn't look right about it. Uh, anyway, it was very highly produced, uh, the, the packaging and everything. It had the shrink wrap. The chief opened it up and put the tape in. And the first thing it started to play was the same thing they had played earlier, which was a talent show over and over again, and realized that it was the talent show run through some sort of audio processing to try to make Willow sound older. And as Willow's song came to a close, it just went into dead air. No more music after the one song from the talent show, the album was empty. There was no fast forward, flip the tape. There was nothing else on there. It drove uh, towards off to the uh, the place beyond the swamp uh, and, and sat there and started to think about how am I going to get in there and find out more. And meanwhile, Dari and Tefe had gone back to Dari's to check on uh, Francis and make sure Francis had lunch. Dari had to wait in the car. Or, I mean, Tefe had to wait in the car. And then Dari said, I want to go look where we last left off with Babs. And uh, Teffy said, why? And uh, Dari said, something's odd. Uh, I don't think, ba- like they said Babs moved because she'd already filled the, the Teffy in and Babs is saying. And she said, but I don't know anymore. And Teffy said, are you sure it's not because you're, you're having a strong reaction to your sister and your friend now? And then Dari said, don't worry about it. Let's just go. And then Tuffy said, well, it's been a few days. Uh, and you said you saw a bunny track. And then uh, they went back to where Dari had seen a big bunny track. Or maybe Dari had thought. Uh, Tuffy said, that's just a, like a, where the mud sinks uh, due to different you know, densities in the water. It's not a bunny track. And uh, uh, Dari said, well, it looked like it was yesterday. And there's really no way to find any tracks. And she said, well, there was like a goo with goose feathers and bunny fur or something. And Duffy said, well, sometimes, you know, like if there's a stick, more than one animal are going to run into it as they go by. You know, like uh, just like uh, more than one person trips on a log. And then Dari said, when you were... um." Kissing Babs, uh, what was it like? And uh, Teffy said, well, you should ask Babs what it's like kissing me. And Dari rolled her eyes. She said, Teffy, I'm serious. Like, uh, what, how did she seem? And he said, well, bubblegum breath. Uh, she seemed in, focused uh, in the moment. Uh, and uh, Dari said, did she kiss you like she was going to kiss you again? And Tefe said, yeah, like, uh, she did say, wow, this is pretty nice kissing you, Tefe. Uh, you're not as bad as a kisser as I thought. We'll have to do practice again, but we should probably, we don't want to get caught by Dari. And Dari said to Tefe, don't you think that's odd? And he said, what, that, that she enjoyed kissing me? And Dari said, well, I'll give you that point, but no, the fact that she wasn't kissing you like it was her last time kissing you. It was like her first time kissing you, right? Tuffy said, well, technically he would ki- like, sure, yeah, What? like it was our first time kissing. And then Dari she started to walk around my uncle and Emmett's car and said, geez, if we just had some other way to know what happened when we walked off and left Babs here. Like, if we could just ask someone, if someone was sitting here watching or listening, uh, did she did she walk home or not? Did, did, like, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and Tefe said, do you think, I've just been thinking about your sister, do you think she recorded that album in a studio? 
and Dari Sintefe, like in, in Tefe was like in River Bottom in a studio. And Dari's like, Tefe, I'm trying to figure out Babs and not my sister right now. Are you paying attention? And Tefe said, Well, I just started thinking about it, like the studio and studio sound. And she said, Why? And he said, well, you know, my uncle Emmett was big on not studio sound and, and like, trying to create sounds in uh, record albums in places, like, that had real resonance. Uh, and she, she said, well, what does it have to do with anything, Tefe? I have, like, uh, well, he's like, well, just when I'm with a truck, because Uncle Emmett had invented this thing. Uncle Emmett had this theory when he was on the road, sometimes he would think of songs. He had no way to record it. And sometimes when they'd be on a road trip with members in the band, they would even make music. Uh, and so he invented this thing in the back uh, that's linked to the engine. Uh, but it's a rolling recorder whenever the engine's running. And the engine was running the whole time we were here that night, even when I went off to follow you. And Dari said, Tefe, you're kidding me. Uh, how do we play it back? And Tefe said, oh, we just do this. Uh, and then they started to play it back. And he said, yeah, this is, my mom used to call this a contraption, not a contraption. And uh, they started to play it back and they rewound it. Uh, luckily, they hadn't been driving for 30 minutes total. Uh, so right at the beginning was a, a Tefe saying, Dari, wait, Dari, and then closing the door. And then eventually Babs getting out and closing her door. And then Babs saying, what a cute little bunny. Come over. Whoa, you're way bigger than... And then Babs talking about... Go and then like a, a, a thunderous boom, boom, boom. Uh, and then a crunching of carrots. And then uh, almost like the singing of go to sleep. Uh, and then Babs saying, I'm so sleepy. Uh, also, while this was happening, at the place beyond the swamp, while uh, Leon was looking in, deep down below uh, the bog walk and the visitor center, uh, they had found uh, a, a, like a strange, gooey, and shimmering entrance into uh, like we didn't. I, didn't, I mean, I'm just seeing this as a memory right now, but it was also like a bunny's den. And someone was in there on the radio, and they were all listening and said, okay, I found it. It's like a, it's kind of like a gross playroom, uh, uh, but it's like, just like a set up like our a miniature version of our world. Like there's different, uh, you know, like people put them up for the holidays. Like this is like that. Uh, it's a playroom that looks the same as our town. And they said, okay, what else do you see? And they said, wait a second, there's another door here. Oh, there's all these cradles in, in here. And there's two. And then all of a sudden there was a shaking, just like they, Dari and Tefe just heard. And then the carrot crunching. And then a clacking of beaks. Uh, gentle, gentle clacking. And they said, uh, oh, boy. Uh, oh no! It's a is that a high bunny? Oh, oh, is that a goose head? I'm getting so sleepy. And then the radio or whatever cut out. At the same time, we were at the school after we had left the assembly, and we were we had gone into where we could use the big ear, the big sound collector. We were trying to start to listen in and and get Billy acclimated with it. Now Billy was having a like a, a drifting into memory of back to like when she lived with Doctor Max, uh, and Doctor Max had had a crush on someone and asked her to kind of listen into them through the radio. And unfortunately, when B Billy was listening in, she started to play it at every radio in the visitor center on all levels. Uh, and the person Dr. Max wanted to listen to was telling her friend that she just wanted to be friends with Dr. Max because he was a little bit, there's something about him she just didn't like. Uh, so Dr. Max was pretty upset. And then Billy was upset because she wanted Dr. Max to be happy. 
And she said, yeah, then she started talking about Dr. Max's wild theories about humans and stuff like that. But then D- Billy drifted back to us and we started to tune in. And then we started to hear Willow singing. And at first she was singing a song, Unbelievable, which we all knew it was really popular and we liked. Uh, then she started singing a song uh, for like a... Uh, uh, show me the way not the like a new uh, current version not not a remake of the uh, m- r- older version of the song and then all of a sudden i started to feel all of us is singing the song or different songs and it was like my whole head was filled and the music was bi- b- building but i could also feel willow singing it to us like hey come and find me this is unbelievable show me the way it was almost like we were all together. I felt this unity, and I also felt this unity with Frances, who was at her house, and at first she was listening to the radio, and then the radio and the wind chimes all started to play these songs. And she could hear Willow singing and us singing through the radio, and the wind chimes were playing underlying music, and then she got up. And then she said, Willow, show me the way, show me the way to find you. And the, then the wind chimes started like, uh, which she didn't realize at the time was like, they were like uh, getting all, like they're bouncing against each other and getting tangled. Uh, but then she started to feel a hopping, hopping, her house was shaking, uh, like a thunder, and then she started to hear the clicking beaks, the same ones from the lab, the same ones from the recording. And then the crunching of carrots. uh, And then, uh, like, uh, Willow saying, still singing, but then sounding like, wait a second, uh, oh, it's time for us to go to bed, time to stop singing, and then the bunny, not singing, but in everyone's minds, all of our minds, Francis's mind, and with Willow saying, I want you to go to sleep and singing this lullaby. And then we all found ourselves uh, falling asleep. But not only that, everybody at school fell asleep because we were broadcasting it in, in, uh, subconsciously to the whole school. We all drifted off uh, to a deep sleep. Uh, Uh, And that's it for now. Good night. All right. I want to thank everybody who reviewed the podcast over on Apple Podcasts. Uh, KRFM said, what is this magic? I don't know how Scoots does it, but the podcast is magic. I always get funny looks when I mention it to new people, uh, but then they say, oh, it worked. Uh, So definitely give it a chance. Um, uh, I love the all intro episodes. Uh, Thanks. uh, Ali919 from Australia says, the best thing ever to, ever to fall asleep. As expected, it took a couple of listens so you get the gist of it, and then it sent me off into a sleepy headspace. Uh, I love this podcast so much. Uh, uh, this person says, good when it first starts out. Uh, I need more rambling. Uh, Miss D O R Miss D O R K I S uh, from Canada says works for me. Uh, didn't like it the first time I listened. To tried it again a year later, and it's been very helpful. Uh, have an infant, uh, and this gets me back to sleep. Uh, Jenny S loves the podcast. Uh, happy Grammy Seven is not happy. Uh, I think because he said the podcast sounds sped up. So check your speed settings in there and that smart speed is turned off in your podcast app. Uh, Redhead 232323 23, 23, 23 says, uh, get through periods where I can't, sh- always coming back. I've been listening on and off for years. Uh, most things that when I wake up, uh, I just f- forget. I've tried more expensive things. Uh, but there's something about the voice uh, that's not trying to be perfect, uh, smooth and silky. Uh, then I'm not afraid to stop listening. Last night I was up an hour and a half. Then I put out an episode and uh, fell asleep. The biggest thing to remember for new listeners is that you're not supposed to be following the story. He just rambles on. Uh, so if you try to pay too much attention, you might get it in the grouchy. 
Uh, Julie F. says, I'm so thankful. The uh, podcast has been listening. 2020 update. Four years later, I still listen to the show. Love the Mandalorian. Five years of using the podcast. Thanks, Julie. Uh, to you, uh, Sleep With Me from Australia says, uh, people should try it. Uh, Scooter puts a lot of work into the podcast. It's goofy and funny. Uh, my mom introduced me to the podcast. Thank you. Then Robin from Canada says uh, the podcast is a bit annoying, uh, so they didn't like it. Uh, they said everything about it. Uh, Jin says, uh, strangely effective. Thank you so much. M. Brush, a sleep savior. Uh, Jordan Adventure says, just thank you. Uh, this has not been an easy time. Uh, Meg says, uh, oh, they said, uh, they, they, like, don't, there's too much before the show starts. Uh, Maeve Borbay, 10 out of 10. Lori, uh, podcast helps. Uh, one T, T says, uh, I slept, uh, then, uh, happy, uh, party doc says, uh, too long of an intro. Ugh. Uh, busy says we work every time. Uh, thank you. And then Nate uh, said uh, 45 minute timer and I'm asleep. Uh, so thanks everybody for reviewing the show. Uh, Sleep with Me exists as a free podcast because people should support the show directly on Patreon, support our sponsors, and then we grow as a podcast by people just spreading the word naturally. So I really appreciate that. Uh, if you, uh, let's see, if you, um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, so, so, so spread the word. Uh, and then uh, here's something I wanted to spread the word to you about. 